Good morning, dear friends. What a joy for us to be together again on this Thursday morning. And thank you for separating this moment to be quiet and silent, to be in the presence of God Almighty, whose voice we are going to hear just for a few minutes before you set out to do your work and live your life today for His glory. And remember, this meditation is a continuation of our last uh, Tuesday's meditation, taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, talking about loving God. And uh, I don't read it today. You remember, if you have listened on Tuesday, you will remember. And uh, or read after this meditation time, and then you will have a clearer understanding of what you heard today. Now, as I said, it is a continuation of last uh, Tuesday's meditation uh, on God's wonderful love gift. Now, of our la uh, 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 the last uh, 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 Tuesday, uh, we have the first part of uh, this God's wonderful love gift. Uh, and how do we know and understand God by the word? And that is what we considered last Tuesday. We were considering uh, four reasons why God gave us the Bible as his love gift to us. And the Bible is called the love letter from God the Father to humanity which includes you and me. And uh, in our last uh, the meditation, um, we thought about the reason number one, which is he gave us the Bible to tell us about himself. And it is by reading and meditating and understanding the explanations of what God's action and his, uh, his, uh, his activities that you are going to know this God more and more. And uh, so make sure that you do not neglect reading and meditating God's word. And we can learn and understand about this God of the Bible. And the Bible is the best gift to humanity from God. And the second reason why God gave us this Bible, his love gift to us, is to tell us of Jesus. The first reason was that we all may know of himself, God the Father. And now there is God the Son. He wants, the God the Father wants us to know him too, uh, uh, very comprehensively. His birth and his life, his works, his uh, uh, sufferings, his death, and his uh, resurrection, and his ascension, and his coming again. All these things are recorded in God's word. It tells us of uh, uh, what he did, and uh, what he said, and uh, what he is doing now, and uh, what uh, he will do in the uh, in the in the eternity that is coming once this age is over what is he going to do this is the age of grace and once this age of grace is come to an end by the rapture of the church uh, what is he doing now until then and and after that what is he going to do now all these things are in god's word now, here is an example, uh, uh, a story I want to tell. It's not a story. It is uh, a real story of uh, two real people. Robert Ingersoll, the first, and uh, Lew Wallace. They were friends. And so Wallace told uh, Ingersoll, I am going to study the Bible and write uh, a book that will destroy the Bible forever. That was his intention. That's what he uh, told his friend he was going to do. 
And so he was going to study the Bible in order to write uh, against the Bible. And that is important. You know, if you want to write about anybody, whether they are a friend or enemy, you need to learn about that person. As he studied, listen to this, as he studied, he studied carefully every verse and every chapter and the background. As he studied, you know what happened? He found Christ as his Savior and wrote a very famous book, Ben-Hur. I am sure you heard about Ben-Hur. And a book that changed the lives of hundreds and thousands of people. And later, the same book has become a Christian movie. And through that movie also, so many people are still coming to the Lord. And uh, this movie also won many awards. Now, consider that Jesus, the life giver, and the life changer, and the life sustainer, and the preserver of life for eternity. And we need to know of this person who came down in the form of a small baby in Bethlehem and grew up. And at the age of 33 and a half years, he fulfilled his commission for which he came. He came for the purpose of giving his life for the sins of the world. And he completed it. And he is ready now to give you and me eternal life by confessing him as our Lord and Savior. And you need to know all about him. Read the Bible, especially New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. Everything that you need to know and must know about Jesus, you will find them there. And thirdly, the third reason why he gave us the Bible is to guide us. You know, David said in uh, Psalm number 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. A lamp doesn't show all the way at once. It leads and show one step at a time. So it is with the Bible. It gives us light for a day. And my friends, you cannot depend on that light you received from God's word yesterday and then don't think you are going to be successful as a Christian today because you enjoyed it yesterday. He gives us that light one day at a time. And it is our responsibility, therefore, our eagerness should take us and lead us again to the word of God each day, that's how you keep the light burning and showing you the light and enjoying the guidance. And baby Moses was put in a basket. The Bible tells us that the basket was coated with pitch and slime. Exodus chapter three, 2 verse 3. A geologist read these words and said to himself, If there was pitch and uh, tar in Egypt, there must have been oil over there. And so they drilled in the vicinity mentioned in the Bible and discovered a rich pool of oil. If we follow the Bible, we will find great riches for our souls, my friends. And riches that you can carry with you into eternity as you meet the Lord Jesus Christ and be with him forever. And do you want to know how to live? 
Let your Bible tell you. Do you want to know how to run a home, a rare family, to plan a life? Do you want to know um, how to get along with uh, other human beings, your brothers and sisters and your friends and others? And how to win friends and influence them? Do you want to know all these? Read the Bible, God's Word. And read the character's story mentioned in the Bible. Like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Gideon, and uh, Elijah, and many of these prophets. And then in the New Testament, Study these characters and to see how rich they became, not for earthly, not with earthly goods, but rich in the faith and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And because of that richness, they have endured. And now they are with the Lord. You will learn all these things by simply looking into God's word and studying and meditating on it and follow it. And let your Bible tell you all the, uh, these and be enriched and help others. And that is the reason the Bible is given. And fourthly and lastly, why the Bible is given to us? To comfort us. Where are you away from home? lonely, suddenly received a letter from uh, which lifted your spirit and made your heart sing. In this world, we are away from our eternal home, surrounded by woes and troubles and pain. And uh, like that letter, which lifts and comforts us. When you turn to the Bible, you read the love letter from Heavenly Father and you forget your woes and your troubles and pain. There is a comfort at times of grief. There is a comfort at times of trials and loneliness, and fear. This book, the Bible, tells us all things work out for good for those who love God. And I want you to take a special note of that phrase. It doesn't say those who believe in God. That is there. But you'll have to graduate from merely believing in Him you must begin to love. And it is for those who love God wholeheartedly, everything will work out to, to, together for good, for your good, even bad things as well. And remember the promise of God, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. How many years are you going to live? 100 years? 125? 150 years? 200? Doesn't matter. As long as you live, He will never leave you nor forsake you, says the Lord. Trust Him. You can trust this God because He's a living, eternal God who changes not. Because He, change, he does not change, you can trust Him. So trust Him today to fill you with the Holy Spirit as you make yourselves available to Him. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you witness to somebody today by giving Him a New Testament and share your faith. And God be with you and bless you as you live for Him, enjoy Him, and serve Him and worship Him. Amen. 
God's blessing be upon you, my friends. This is a great day. Enjoy your life today. Amen.